Welcome to the video syllabus for Math 120 Statistics at Elgin Community College with uh, Professor Dan Kernler. That's me. Uh, in this video, we're going to talk a little bit about how the course is set up, um, how you're graded, things like that. And really, we're going to especially focus on what your expectations should be of the course. What, what will it take to be successful? Uh, in the past, I've really seen um, students who struggle just not really have the right expectations for what they need to be doing in order to be successful. So that's really what we're going to focus on. We're going to start just though with how you're going to be graded. We've got five components to the course and we'll kind of go through them one by one. We're not going to go in depth into exactly what each one looks like. We'll have other, other videos for that in other kind of websites or web pages to look at later. But for now, we're just going to kind of briefly go over them. So uh, we'll have weekly assignments that'll be online, online homework through my stat lab. Uh, if you've had other classes before at ECC, you might have used my math lab. Same product. Um, uh, it's, a, it's a different code. You can't use my math lab code for it. Uh, it's a special code, my stat lab, but um, it'll look the same. It has the same kind of resources to it. So if you're familiar with that, if not, it's a pretty short uh, learning curve. Um, you can see I've got this little chart here, and this is how you're going to be graded. So my philosophy for online homework is that just doing some homework shouldn't get you credit. To really earn some points, you need to show that you've learned almost all of that material. So I have a little rubric. You can kind of see if I get my mouse over here. Um, if you earn in a particular homework assignment less than 50%, you're not going to get any points for your homework grade for that. Um, then you can see there's a you know intervals here, and then if you get above 90%, that means there's like one problem left, or you know maybe a part of a problem even that you just weren't able to complete. I'm okay giving you full credit, four points out of four points for that homework assignment. It means that you're missing something, so there's something that you quite you know you haven't quite mastered, but you're going to earn full credit uh, for that particular homework assignment. Uh, the assignments are usually uh, they're by section in the textbook that we'll be following. We're not going to require you to purchase a textbook, but we will be following the textbook. And so the, the assignments will be by section, and there's usually four or five of them um, each week. Um, yeah, and then that, out of your total grade, those homework assignments will add up to be 10% of your total grade. Quizzes will also be online. They're through my stat lab. They will be a weekly quiz. Oh, the homework, by the way, is due. Um, it's due every week. We'll talk more about when in the week it's due. It's due on Wednesdays. Um, but that will have homework almost every week, except when we have tests. Quizzes are also every week, but they will be one quiz for the whole week. So the quizzes will be more by chapter instead of by section. And those are just whatever grade you get is the grade you get. So if you get, you know, 89%, you get an 89 on that particular uh, quiz. The difference uh, between the homework and the quizzes, the primary difference between that grading is also what's available. So we'll talk more about the homework when we get there, but there's lots of help buttons, you know, see an example, uh, get a couple of hints for it. You can sometimes watch a video. So for the quizzes, the, the, the questions will look the same as the homework, but there won't be any assistance available to you. Um, you can have your notes open, you can have websites open, all that stuff, uh, but you just, you, you won't have the assistance within the system. Um, huge part of our course is a semester-long project. We'll talk a lot about that as we go, um, but it's broken on into seven different components, and so you're not going to be doing this huge project all at once. You're not going to be allowed to wait until the end of the semester to do it. You won't be able to. You'll have to do different pieces as we go, and that's 15% of your course uh, grade. Uh, essentially, it's a survey. You're going to write your own survey. You're going to actually do a random sample of people, and you're going to ask them the survey questions and compile it and come up with a report as we get to the end. But we'll have more videos about that as we go. Uh, the exams, we'll have four exams. Three of them are kind of midterm, like during the semester, unit exams. Uh, they have to be proctored. This is a college policy or a department policy, actually, a uh, math department policy. And it's one I'm very comfortable with and I think is appropriate. Uh, it doesn't have to be at ECC. If you can't come to ECC, if that's not convenient, uh, another community college, a library. I've had people, um, I had a FEMA employee one time, and so she was out in New York and New Jersey. And so she coordinated with, an, I think it was another uh, community college out there. Um, so you, it has to be proctored. Uh, but it doesn't have to be at ECC. That's the convenient place for most people, but it doesn't have to be. And this is just so we can know that it's you taking the test. Um, there's no one there helping you. 
um, and you don't have any resources you're not supposed to. During the test, we really need to know what do you know, what have you learned from the course, and so this is kind of one of the ways to, to control for that. Uh, we have a three-day window. I'll talk more about that schedule, but um, tests usually take a couple of hours. Um, if you're quick with it, you can get it done in an hour. Um, my students that take it on campus usually get done in an hour and a half when they have my regular class. So um, some students complain about it taking too long. I think that's usually just a lack of preparation. Uh, so, but there's three days that you'll be able to come in and take that or take it at your proctored location. Uh, if you can't come to ECC, this is something you need to start thinking about right away. It's your responsibility to coordinate a different location. So you need to start contacting community colleges, libraries, something about how to proctor a test. You need to have access to a computer. We're gonna, this is an online course. We're going to be heavy technology. You're going to be doing computers to do the statistical analysis. The test is written, but you're going to be doing a lot of stuff with technology. So you need to start thinking about that and, and getting in touch with me if you can't come to our campus. Uh, the final is really two parts. Part of it is another unit exam. It's just at the very last week. And then there's also a cumulative exam uh, from chapters one through nine. It's also proctored, and we'll also have a three-day window for that. And that'll be the very last week of the semester. So uh, that's how your grade is broken down. You can see the bulk of it is from exams. So you really have to master the content. And this is where what I was talking about earlier about having these expectations of, of time come into play about how much time is necessary because it isn't just about getting the work done it's about mastering the content because you have to be able to demonstrate it on those exams um, we'll have more specifics uh, under the course resources tab about these different components and we'll also have some more videos as the semester progresses so let's talk a little bit more about time um, i'm not sure if you're aware, aware but the standard expectation at ecc and elsewhere at colleges is two hours outside of class for each hour spent inside of class or for each credit so Math 120 is four credits, so we, if we were meeting in the class, we would meet four hours a week, and so we would have then eight hours a week spent studying outside of class. Let's we'll look at a calendar here, and I've got a theoretical student. This isn't going to match any of you perfectly, so uh, if you're just taking one class, this class, I want you to kind of think about what your schedule would be and how that relates to this, because the key here is just about how much time do you need to spend um, studying because you're not going to have any in-class time. How much time do you need to spend studying to be successful in this class? And we're working with this baseline expectation that is 12 hours to be successful. So I've got a theoretical student here, full-time, and then working part-time. That isn't everybody. Um, a lot of students are taking classes part-time and working full-time or family. They're, everybody's situation is different. So try not to discount the schedule here. Kind of think about how your situation would be different, but yet how it relates to this. So I've got four classes kind of theoretical intro schedule here biology uh, English some stats some speech uh, the bio English and speech are all three credits each so that would be six hours of studying for those uh, might be different some weeks than others you know it kind of depends on the class and what's going on but let's assume this student works Thursday Friday and then on the weekends as well I don't know what kind of job this might be that works from 5 to 11 maybe at a restaurant maybe something like that I don't know um, so then we have to fit in the study uh, hours in there as well. So bio, six hours for bio, six hours for English, um, eight hours for stats, and then six hours for speech and some time to eat there, eat some lunch, eat some dinner here, maybe eat at work. I'm not sure. Again, just, just a, again, just a theoretical schedule. So here is the allure of an online class. You can remove those four hours that you had to spend in class and maybe shift some other things around. But here is the point of this. This is the point of me taking the time to make this whole <laughs> fancy PowerPoint animation. You don't just lose those hours. You have to replace them. You still need to spend 12 hours. Now you have to add a couple hours at night, maybe a couple hours on Friday. Now you still need to spend those 12 hours. The, the benefit of it is, um, you don't have to come to class. You still need to spend those 12 hours, but you just you get some flexibility. You don't save that time. Taking an online class often actually ends up taking more time because you're teaching yourself. You can't 
come in to ask questions, you know, or you can come in to ask questions in my office, but you can't, you know, raise your hand in class and stop and ask questions and do some examples in class while I'm there to help you, or your classmates are there to help you. You're learning it all on your own, and there's, we will have lots of resources available, videos, links. Uh, we have a whole course website with examples, um, YouTube full of uh, videos that I've made for each section, but that gives you flexibility. You can watch it on your phone while you're out at the coffee shop, all of that, but you still need to spend that time that is so important if you don't if you were hoping to just not come to class and then it would be a lot easier it is not taking online classes is harder at least for most students it's harder because you have to learn on your own for me I'm a much better in-class student I learn much better when I'm there I know I have to come to class every day it reminds me that I need to keep up on my work and so I can't overemphasize how important time management is and setting aside that time, scheduling that time, and working throughout the week. Um, along those lines, let's talk a little bit about my suggested workflow for how your, your week should go. So we'll have some chapter videos. Um, my recommendation, kind of watch those Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Then Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, start working through the online lesson, um, some homework. The homework is going to be due Wednesday, so Friday, Saturday, watch some videos, Sunday through Tuesday, kind of start working on the online lesson, which is a website that I've made. Uh, there are some examples to look at and try on your own and start doing the homework. A lot of people like to kind of do it, um, watch the video, work through the online lesson, do the homework for that section, and then watch the video for the next section, Do look at the lesson, do the homework, and kind of do it section by section. Whatever works best for you, if you want to watch all the videos first or work through all the website first, it's up to you. Um, so the homework is due on Wednesday, uh, and then that's Wednesday at, at midnight, actually 11.59 p.m. on Wednesday, just so there's no confusion, because technically midnight is, is, midnight Wednesday is actually between Tuesday and Wednesday. So it's 11.59 p.m. on Wednesday is the homework deadline. Thursday, whatever you get wrong, you can kind of review some of that. Friday, um, there's a quiz and now you're watching the video for the next section but that's when the quiz is due is Friday night at 11:59 p.m. and that's kind of my suggested workflow now you have flexibility on when in the day you want to do these things if you don't <laughs> the one thing that I am not trying to make fun of this student but I have had a couple of students complain that they don't like that the homework is due at midnight because they have to work then but that's to have a do at some point you can work on it whenever you want so if you work nights, then you're going to have to schedule time during the day, and you're going to have to can't do it at the deadline. And that's totally fine. There's lots of flexibility. That's the benefit of an online class. Uh, but you have to find the time to do that. A uh, little note about the projects. Um, my regular teaching schedule is Monday through Thursday, and then Fridays is my grading and prep day. And so projects take a really long time to grade. So I want to have them due Thursday nights so I can grade them on the Fridays after they're due. So all the projects, and you're actually, we'll talk more about it again later, but you'll have to post some replies and kind of comment on a couple of your classmates' projects. Those are all due on Thursdays, so I can do the grading on Fridays. Um, so let me just summarize here with the, the key points that I want you to take home from this. First of all, taking online classes doesn't save you time. It just gives you more flexibility. So if you were hoping to save time, you might be better off just taking the regular class. You get a lot more flexibility, and online classes are great for people who are working or have um, families and need to take time, you know, need to have some flexibility on when they can take classes. It's great, but you still have to spend that time. You have to be independent and motivated. If you know that you struggle with deadlines and you struggle to do work on your own, the, the online class is not going to be good for you. Um, I'm not trying to dissuade people from taking it. We just... At ECC, we want students to succeed. And so for many students, that is not in an online class. So we really want to make sure that you have that in your mind from the start, that I need to be motivated and time focused. Um, you have to coordinate somewhere to take the tests. So we have four tests, three during the semester. The first one, I think, is week five. Um, and then uh, that one for the final as well, you have to coordinate where to take that. If you're going to take it at ECC, that's fine. You're done. Uh, it's pretty easy. Uh, if you need to take it somewhere else, it's your responsibility to coordinate that and to give me contact information. 
If you delay that and you wait until the day before and you can't get it done, that you're going to get a zero on that test. You need, you need to start thinking about that right now. Uh, and finally, one of the downsides for an online class for some students is that you can feel a little disconnected because you're at home, you're doing your work by yourself, you're not coming to class where you, you meet people and you're asking questions. So you, you can sometimes feel like that you have to do it on your own. And that is definitely not true. I am there to help you as you go. Most of my course, most of my stuff for the course has been created. There's a few things I'm going to tweak as we go. But most of my like lecture, all the stuff, that stuff's done. So my main work during the semester is answering emails or helping students that come to my office and ask questions or answering questions on the discussion board. So feel free to ask questions. I really like questions that are in the discussion board in D2L, even if it's just a homework question. Um, because sometimes, well, actually not sometimes, almost all the time, if you have a question, someone else will as well. So that saves me multiple email replies. If I'm replying a lot, I can just post it once to your question in the discussion board. Um, you can come to campus and, and schedule, a, like you, if it's during my regular student hours, you can just pop in. But if it's not and you need to schedule an appointment, you can come in, see me in my office. Every semester I have one or two students that meet with me pretty regularly. And that can be really helpful. You don't need to do this all on your own. You have a lot of resources available. So please feel free to, to ask questions. All right. Um, thanks for watching. It's kind of a long video. Most of them for this semester will not be this long. Most of our section videos are 10 minutes long or so. Um, be sure to check out some of the other videos that are available or will soon be available in D2L. We'll talk about the project summary and how to use my stat lab. Um, eventually, I'll hopefully have some links up within this video here as well. So um, yeah, I think that is it. Uh, if you have any other questions, you can post them down below. When, if you post a comment um, to this video, um, Google emails me and tells me there's a comment. So please feel free to put a comment down below if you have a question. Um, and uh, I will feel free. I will uh, respond right away to that. All right. Thanks and welcome to the course. I look forward to seeing your work throughout the semester.